Hey guys, welcome to my 1,500 kilometers review of my Evolve e-skateboard. And wow, that's roughly 1,000 miles and an equivalent of 100 charge cycles. And before I say anything else, I'll have a very interesting video on how to extend the range of your board by connecting external batteries coming up soon. Also in line is the accurate range test plus some more rides and further interesting stuff. During the past 10 months, I've done a stunning 1,500 kilometers on my e-board. Actually, I'm using it frequently, not just for fun rides, that is skate tours, but also for shopping and short distance rides to the next bank. Overall, the performance was uh, really great and I can recommend the board. This said, there are a few things I came across during all this distance and I'd simply like to talk about it. First of all, the performance clearly varies with temperature. We'll talk about this in detail in the range test video, but temperatures below 10 degrees centigrade or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, especially when you don't want to accelerate gently and to forgo max speed all the time, then the range effectively goes down to as much as 50%. That's never anywhere mentioned, so I'm doing it. And hey, that's a fact. Don't forget, we'll talk about a range extension mod in one of the next videos. Since I'm quite enthusiastic about the board, several buddies of mine, meanwhile, have also bought one. And from the comments on the previous videos, I can see that also some of you guys bought boards after watching them. These are mostly Evolve Bamboo or Bustin series, but also two Evolve Pintails. And here's an interesting story about the latter. Two pintails were bought at the exact same time and the performance was significantly different. That's interesting insofar as had they been bought separately by individuals which did not know each other, this may not have been discovered right away. The weaker board has been sent back to Evolve for repair and they've been trying to fix it for quite a while now. Similarly, Jean Neves recently commented that on his board, uh, on his new board, the motor broke down after just 30 minutes. Well, bottom line is that Evolve 2 isn't perfect, but it nonetheless is one of the best boards out there. Now, let's move on. These black rubber-like elements here are a silicone mask called Shugru. We all use it to make our boards a bit more water resistant, so we can ride them on wet surfaces, through puddles or light rain. And I can recommend doing this. My first set of dampers was completely through after 1000 kilometers or 620 miles. Probably I should have exchanged them after 800 kilometers or 500 miles already. As for the screws all around the board, I recommend using Loctite because otherwise when going off-road, these screws will come loose after just a few kilometers and this will cause your battery tray to become loose and to shake. I'm not sure if it's the same on the bamboo board and on the pintail boards, but hey, using Loctite is never a wrong thing and I recommend doing this. I intentionally never exchanged or rotated the wheels and it turns out that the tire has lost all of its profile after around 1200 kilometers or 750 miles. I'd say that's quite good. And I then changed to uh, these rougher type of tires and I'm currently testing these. Talking about tires, I've had six flat tires altogether. That's about one every 250 kilometers. Uh, that's a bit much for my taste, but repairing them is just like with bikes. It's annoying, but not really a problem. One other thing I found is that when you pump up the tires to say three bars or 45 PSI, then after just a few days, they're back down at 1.5 bars and stay there. Hmm, not sure what to make of this. Over time, the free play between the rims and the ball bearings increases. At higher speeds, this may, in connection with the damper settings, lead to some wheel wobble. It's clearly there and I've heard a number of people report about it too. Um, as for me and on the carbon all-terrain, I haven't found this to be a major problem though. Bearings. I still use my very first set of bearings that came with the board. However, I do clean them quite often and I re-lubricate them with some sort of oil from the outside and the oil then uh, creeps in. And so far this works nicely. My buddy doesn't do it and uh, his bearings already run much, much rougher. So do keep your bearings clean. My first drive belt gave up after 1450 kilometers. That's 900 miles. 
While it still looked quite okay, the filaments that give the belt its strength were torn apart. Continued riding was impossible. While replacing the belt, it became obvious that also the teeth of the big drive gear showed advanced signs of wear. This is not caused by wear of the belt, but it's an independent phenomenon. Now, while these were rather technical things, let's talk about board performance now. As mentioned in the beginning, I really love the board and at least for my rider weight, its performance is great for most terrains and virtually everything I'm using the board for. So clearly, two thumbs up for Evolve. From time to time, I get to ride my buddy's bamboo and pintails and compared to the carbon, they feel less stable at higher speeds and especially off-road, but their turning radius is significantly better and really that's a nice thing, I have to admit that. Common to all these boards are occasional cutouts, meaning the remote suddenly and briefly disconnects from the board, causing the board to have thrust fluctuations. That's indeed a bit annoying and there seem to be a number of influencing factors. Firstly, keep your remote charged. Secondly, if you experience problems, try not to shield your remote with your body from the board. But even if you do pay attention to all these things, it sometimes happens nonetheless. We do not really know, but we feel there are more incidents at lower temperatures and when the air humidity is higher. When looking through the internet, some riders report more problems and others have fewer problems, so it may have to do with the climate or the region they're in, or to some degree maybe also with variances in manufacturing quality, as we've uh, discussed earlier. Overall, from my experience, it's not a big issue and not really worth making a fuss about it. The remote still works great after all this time and even after the occasional crash. And on my buddies, the small trigger lever down here got stuck, but well, he's tampered with it and maybe that's the reason. The uh, free play also doesn't really go down over time, but I'd say it's not really a problem. And the one thing I noticed though so, is that the remote sometimes freezes when in reverse mode. Turning it off and back on solves the problem, but still, hmm. So, to wrap this all up, after 1,500 kilometers or 1,500 miles, we do have some wear and tear, but all is in the normal range. And if you've got a weaker board, then it usually shows pretty much right from the beginning. Otherwise, performance so far and after 100 charge cycles is constant and still on a really good level. Personally, I'm happy with it and I would still recommend the product. Well, that's it for today. Stay tuned for more information.